Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Azuric Rise of Parathia. Not going to read anything from the manual today. Um, instead we'll just sort of leave it for a bit. So last episode, uh, okay, over, over the past couple of episodes we've raised the tower up in the middle of the earth realm and the goal is now to find two keys to place into the top of it. We do have two keys for drills at the moment but they're not relevant to us. They won't work in the top of the tower. Last episode we um, set up a conveyor belt network through the earth realm which has actually enabled us to get those keys now. So what we're going to do is head over to that drill on the far side of this region. And we're going to explore one of the prettier looking areas in Zurich and really enjoy this, guys, because... Oh, sorry, I'm actually quite far away from the microphone here. <laughs> but do enjoy this next area because it's, um, it's one of the last really pretty areas we're going to have for a little while. Because, like it or not, we're not this episode, but and possibly not this next episode, but we're going to be looking at the Fire Realm again soon. Uh, where do you think... So I talked about how the different realms connect to each other in interesting ways. Um, how, you know, where Earth meets air, we've got a giant tree that reaches into the skies. Where would Earth meet fire? Well, a giant ass volcano is the answer to that question. And yes, there's a volcano region. So that's what we're going to be dealing with. That's one of the larger areas, um, more frustrating areas. But don't worry. Don't worry for a couple of episodes. I don't know why I'm telling you. Anyway, so we drilled through that hole before, but I deliberately didn't show you what was there. By coming through, though, uh, you will see this is what we're dealing with. What a pretty area. Oh, man. Looks so nice in here. Love it. It reminds me of... So, another Xbox game or demo that I used to play. This is this is when games had demos, guys. Actually, on the main menu screen of this, there are demos you can play for... Well, you can't play. They're all just like movies. They're basically trailers. I might show those off at some point. But yeah, this reminds me of the Wallace and Gromit demo that I once had as a part of an Xbox game. But listen to the ambience in here! It's so beautiful. I know the combat sounds might be kind of annoying. It's such a nice area. Um, the region that I've actually walked to here on this like plateau, this is only for gemstones. So don't worry too much if you're not if if you're like playing along with me and you don't really care about gemstones that much, you don't have to do this bit. But look, there's such pretty stuff here. There's these little fireflies and butterflies around. Oh, it's wonderful. Um, and can you can you see that boulder that just fell down? That's actually connect to a conveyor belt system that's now up and running. If we hadn't done that stuff in the desert earlier last episode, um, we would sort of be at a dead end right now. We could have got one of the keys for the tower, but we wouldn't have been able to get. Of the second because you need the conveyor belt running there's also an obsidian for us to collect here too which will put us up to 38 obsidians and then there'll be 39 later on oh we're gonna be one short again one obsidian short again so anyway look there's that I only came here for the gemstones there's a huge gap down there you will mark my words fall to your death if you go down there's also like a weird marshy te texture down there that you can never get anywhere near but there is that there uh, the uh, water as well the water current it's running very fast and it will drag you along we already know this game has water currents yeah don't tempt it don't go anywhere near the water if you can help it so we've got an overlord here as well kill him get a little bit more to our elements and I believe an overlord just climbed into that golem, so we're definitely going to ignore him for a while. Yeah, he definitely did. Okay, so uh, that's basically this little area. You just come along here for gemstones. There's not even really any rocks to smash. Um, the more fun part about this section, sadly, as pretty as this area is and as lovely as it all sounds, this area doesn't actually have too much for us to... Oh, come on. I swear I hit you there. There we go. This area doesn't actually have too much for us to do. Um, my idea last episode, if anyone was watching there, last episode I... Uh, I wanted to do the desert area and this all together, but it just sort of didn't make sense because I would have had to have rushed through this. And who likes rushing? So, yeah, um, this area isn't too long, but it will enable us to finally finish off the tower. I'm going to kill these harvesters, which were entirely too much effort for what they really are worth. And the first key is very easy to get. can be acquired nice and, e uh, nice and early. Think about it. What did we have to do to, to get here, right? We needed water power. So right from the start of the game, what did we need to get exactly where we're currently stood? We needed water power. So that we could uh, break down the wall so that we could get to the Earth Realm in the first place. And then what did we need? Nothing. We could have come to the Water Realm. We could have found the two keys, turned all, opened up the um, pads. Uh, and then we could have uh, rode it here. We could have picked, killed an overlord, got the key. 
drilled our way in, and voila. And indeed, like, my first time playing through the game, the Earth Realm was where I spent all my time. I had, like, no powers. But I spent all my time in the Earth Realm. All these keys and different areas interlocking with one another. You can go and explore around. Oh, amazing. And this was one of them. You know, very simple to get. We didn't, we didn't need the conveyor belts on to do this. All we needed to do was just drill into this little area. So cool. And the other thing I particularly remember being excited about when I first played was that giant tube. When you ride along and you see this and you just get a glimpse of it, and if you've, you know, been wandering around for ages, you know, hours and hours and hours playing this game and you see it all the time every time you go back along that lift and you're constantly wondering, how do I get there? When do I get there? And finally you do. Ah, oh, great stuff. So here's the conveyor belt that I'm talking about. This wouldn't have been functioning. There would have been a, uh, a rock blocking our way. We're going to kill this overlord. Would have been a rock blocking our way. We're going to wait for one to go and get on as soon as we can. Now, even though the texture wouldn't suggest it for these, and they've got a really cool animation rolling in here, you can actually still climb on these. Oh, we missed that sapphire. That's a bit of a shame. So you can still climb on. Uh, sorry about missing those sapphires. We'll probably never get those. Just throwing it out there just because I can't be bothered to go back. Um, but what you're going to want to do is just ride this up. Before, we wouldn't have been able to have done such a thing. But now, uh, the world is becoming our oyster. We get, like, another little pathway. I love these sections of the game where you just sort of get to sit about and talk about life. So how's everybody been doing? Hope you're not uh, having too bad of a day. I found, um, I've been listening to Yoshi's Island soundtrack. I've never even played that game, but I've been listening to the soundtrack. It sounds so good. I, like, tweeted it out the other day. I said, hey, if anybody's feeling, uh, feeling down, just have a listen to this track. Because, oh my god, what, what a pick-me-up that entire game soundtrack really is. Fantastic stuff. So, yeah, we're going to climb up and now we get on top of the glass tube. And again, this was another area where the guide I'm following uh, actually didn't know about an obsidian, which I do. There's an obsidian hidden on this glass tube. The idea is we're going to walk back all the way along here. Another thing is, if you haven't turned on the conveyor belts and you come into this region, you're going to be highly tempted to try and climb up the trees to get on top of this. Because it's quite obvious there's stuff going on because you've got a golem there, you've got ladders. But And it looks like maybe you can use these trees to climb up. You can't. Take my word for it, you can't. But instead of walking onto that, which is what they want you to do, if you hop over this tree branch here... Go on, Azuric, over you go. Um, it's obscured by the ceiling, which slants down, but there's actually an, uh, an obsidian. You should be dead. There we go. There's an obsidian uh, right around the corner, nestled deep on there, which you can see as you first enter the area, actually, because we're sort of just above where we first came in. So we'll grab that. That's 38. I'm so desperate to find another obsidian, guys. If we can get a 40th one, that'll be so good. We can get our next upgrade, which is that really unique, cool-looking one. Yes. Now, we got a question. Do we want to actually kill that golem? I guess we do. Let's put on our generic shield and it's lightning because he doesn't have an overlord in him. Sort of spaced a little bit there. These guys like freak out and do so much damage. There we go. We might even be able to knock him off if we're lucky. All we need to do is just knock him nah, He's not going to move. All we need to really do is knock him away from that ladder because I don't want to get hit as I'm trying to fall down there. Because if that happens, we haven't saved since we started recording. So I would have to redo the entire recording and that doesn't sound very fun, does it? We're going to climb down the ladder. I'll say one thing this game is good at. So many games are bad at, like, climbing. Like, they're good for climbing onto a ladder from the bottom. But so many games are bad for getting onto ladders from the top. Is he immune to that element? That's pretty interesting. I didn't know they were immune to electric. They're so bad for climbing, but Azuric's pretty good. It will latch you on pretty pretty tightly every time. So we go. That's the second key. There were three to activate the tower. We already got one. If you remember, we got it. It was like a freebie from when we first raised the tower up. Um, but that's the two keys we need. So we can restore a lot of the functionality of the Earth Realm. And sadly, that's it for this uh, very pretty, very nice sounding area. Um, so, yeah, like I say, suck it in. Suck it in, guys. Because we're going to be having so much lava and stuff filling our vision <laughs> soon enough. Um, this will be the last episode I record for today. Uh, because then I want to go off and actually... Um, well, I've got some other things. I'm going to be working on Crown Law soon. But I want to check and see whether we can actually fight the Water Guardian. Uh, it'll be very cool if we can get a nice boss fight going because we haven't really seen any of that aspect of the game just yet. So it'll be nice to get a boss fight going um, before we enter the volcano realm. Um, but we'll have to see. So anyway, we're going to climb out and our goal now is to get back on top of the tower. I guess I will either cut it or speed it up. Let you guys listen to a bit of the ambience as we go and see you in a second. These guys look so derpy, by the way. Look at this thing. Look, they've got, like, giant bug eyes. They're actually really scary looking. 
Wow, look at that thing. The texture's quite cool in it as well, actually. Alright, so uh, we're going to climb up to the top of the tower, and this is the final piece of the puzzle in terms of restoring functionality to the Earth Realm. So let's recap. Okay, we got the core section of the Earth Realm. We've got the, the, the little area where it meets the water realm, which we've done everything except for that obsidian on that big ice archway. We've got the desert and conveyor belt region, which we've done very little of yet, and that's where the Earth Guardian resides. We've got the drill area, which we finished except for an acid block. And that's about it so far. And then we got like the area that we skip with the teleporters. Once we place these keys in, you know all these giant cogs that have been like embedded into walls? These? These are now going to start working. And that has opened up the Earth Realm even more. Every single one of these we've ever seen now will take us to a new region. So I just described to you the regions we've already seen. And now there's loads more. We can go to that giant tree if we like. Pretty exciting idea. We can go to one of the... Do you remember the first multicolored orb we ever saw? It's actually over there. You can just about see it. Do you remember that? We can go over there now into that mountainy area. There's one as well uh, between the two silver teleporters that we've been skipping every time. And that's like another one of those crystals I've been talking about. It's opened up the Earth Realm even more. And we haven't seen the volcano area yet. Pretty cool. Uh, all in due time, my friends. All in due time. However, uh, with that done, with the um, tower basically dealt with, and Knight just turned, so you saw the Bambi creature now just turned into a Norhart. Do you remember how hard this guy was to kill originally? Let's see how easily he dies to Whirlwind. One combo, very cool. I love it. Uh, so now that we've done that, I'm actually going to take us back to the ice area for this episode, um, because we've got like a little bit of extra time. Don't forget, we've now got water level 2 and fire level 2, so by going back to the ice realm, we can actually finish that stuff there. We can get hopefully two obsidians, though I only know of one that we've actually got available to us, which is going to suck, but we can finish that, we can get the fragment that's over there, and that will leave us in the water realm for the end of the episode, and uh, segue nicely onto the potential water guardian kill next episode. So anyway, I'll cut it guys, I'll see you over there. Uh, it's time to get ourselves another disc fragment. It would be so nice if we could get this already. Oh my god, we did get it. Wow, I skipped it. Amazing. There are sequence breaks in the game. Wow. Okay, I guess I'll have to edit that in. Sorry, I wasn't talking a particular amount there. But yeah, as we walked through, I managed to get that. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, that helps. That's so useful. We shouldn't have been allowed to do that. There's another sequence break, actually, that I never mentioned to you guys. When we get our first ever firepower, do you remember? It's in the icy area of the Earth Realm. Do you remember just that little section before we slid down the giant thing? Um, and you, you go into that area I called, like, the Ice Palace. Uh, well, in that tiny region, you can actually just jump over the ice blocks you're meant to melt on your way out. And it's a tiny little sequence break that I suppose if you were speedrunning the game, you'd get like a couple of seconds. I doubt anybody's ever speedrun this, though. And that's a bit of a shame, because it is a big game, and with, you know, so many branches and things, and potential bugs. Like, the bugs in this can be, you know, or exploits, I guess, can be pretty fun. So it's kind of interesting to me. Also, I never walk back through this. This is really weird. I'm nearly always taking the teleport. It's a very odd perspective on going back through this this realm. Uh, yeah, so there are sequence breaks and things. I guess we got our extra obsidian there, so that definitely means we'll get our 40 obsidian upgrade soon enough. Uh, but this is the town back over this way. As I say, what I'm going to do is head into town, walk straight to the water realm, take that teleporter, go to the ice realm. Oh, that was amazing. I've got to leave that in. I've got to leave that in. We can absolutely wreck those bots now. Wow. Four kills and two attacks. That was that was that was excellent. Okay, guys. Hello. We're at the ice realm. <laughs> I said so much stuff as I was walking through. I don't know how, how many little sections I'm going to cut in there. First order of business, though. Ah, oh, bots. No bots. Just because I destroyed some on the way here. Right. Okay. So first of the order of business is we're going to come to this island here. I believe this is the right one, anyway. Yeah, it definitely is the right one. Uh, and now that we've got steam power two, we can melt the ice block that we found here. Just a couple of episodes ago, and uh, grab the obsidian. That's literally all we're doing here. Uh, I'll put on my smash shield just because it's so useful. And what? I don't know why I I opt to go this way when I could just easily melt through that. But whatever. It's just one of those weird little hab habitual things I do. Like I do it every time, and then I remember, oh, there's a much more simple way of doing this. Oh well. I've never failed that jump as tricky as it looks. Right over here. With steam power 2, we can melt ice block power 2, 
and grab ourselves a cheeky little obsidian. Putting us up to 40. Very nice. So that means that next episode, amongst potentially fighting a boss, we will be able to, uh, and I've actually got air power this time, which is really useful. Uh, we'll actually be able to get another uh, cool upgrade, which is nice. Second order of business is I'm going to do that entire like long chain platform thing again. Yes, really. Kind of frustrating. We're going to do that again. I should probably kill some bots here too because they're just going to irritate me every time I mess this up. Uh, and I will see you guys. Actually, no. Well, first of all, there we go. We'll get that. First of all, we'll melt this ice block here, which is going to do something significant that we haven't seen just yet to do with those ice bridges we made. Actually, is this just going to make the second ice? Because we only have one made. No, no, no. We made both of them, didn't we? So this is actually going to cause, I don't know, ice, wind of some kind to get blown into the sky. A snow. That's what it's meant to be. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. It's meant to be snow. This is going to blow snow into the sky and rain snow down all across the realm and stop things from being... Damn it! The iceberg's leaving! No! <laughs> Oh, that really sucks. Wow, why does this always happen? It's going to create snow everywhere. And you know those really icy bridges that we couldn't walk on before? Now we can. <coughs> Alright, here we go. It looks like we're clear to just run for it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So this is what it's meant to be. The bots aren't meant to be on the friggin' thing. Oh, and the smash power barrier isn't even here. That's really useful. Cool. So we get to save. Now the problem is, even if I fall, that save point's not going to help me. But look, the bots are in a fine position today. So we'll activate our smash barrier as well here. Oh, that was really good. There we go. I'm actually doing good at the combat at the moment. Excellent. Right, we're going to jump across here. Right. Right, machine number one. And last time we, we had to sort of rely on sliding across this in a really awkward way. Well, now it's got snow on it, which means it's just perfectly fine and easy to walk along. You see this? Absolutely fine. We, 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 we don't have a worry in the world here. And now the second one as well, which I talked about how I constantly got slid off of when I was younger and for no good reason. Well, now I'm going to put on my smash barrier again. Well, now, I mean, this still looks pretty awkward, actually. Which is brilliant. I, on my test file, I haven't actually done this re this section of the game. This still looks really awkward, but oh my god. Oh yeah, no, I remember this because it splits as well at the end. Yeah, look at that. Look at how awkward they make this. This is horrifying. You fall and you have to do so much stuff. Oh my god. There we go. Woo! God, that feels really good, actually. Alright, I'm also not going to risk going anywhere along that. I'm just going to fly. Ah, fire disc fragment. That's actually the first fragment of the fire disc, would you believe it? That we've got. So we now have the equivalent of two and a half discs, guys. Pretty cool. And 40 obsidian. It's uh, it's actually, you know, some reasonable... Um, <coughs> uh, what's the word? I don't know. It's showing us quite reasonably accurately how much progress we've made through the game at this point. You know, it's starting to really show. But there you go. Uh, unfortunately, there was only one obsidian to collect. But because of the sequence break I did earlier, that doesn't matter. I've got enough stuff. Now comes to the uh, unfortunate trial of leaving this zone. We're going to wrap up the video in a second as well, but I want to do it in a very specific area, guys, because um, there's a there's a region of the water realm that I've been skirting around a lot, and I've not shown you exactly, and that's where I want to end, because it'll be cool that way. Trust me. Okay, so with that area now complete, aside from, you know, a few pickups we need to get later once we've got stronger abilities, um, I want to show you guys the whirlpool in the center of the water realm, because we've been swimming around this and avoiding this as best we possibly can for a long time. There, you can see the whirlpool there in the distance. And I think this this thing looks phenomenal. It looks so good. I need a bit of vocabulary to really express to you guys how amazing this thing looks. Um, if, it, if you're anywhere near this in the water, especially deep down, it will suck you in and it will kill you. Very dangerous thing. But look, it's an actual... It's like a plug. It's not a whirlpool. It's like a plug in the ocean floor. It's like a giant sink and the water's being drained away. How fantastic. What a magical idea, and it is in control, in operation, by some bizarre machinery. We do have a ladder here that allows us to climb up to largely what is a pointless platform, uh, with some sleaths up at the top. Wow, there we go, that was good. That was actually really good, oh my god. I, I, I sacked so many hits, and my shield just like ate them all. 
was fantastic and it allowed me to get up. Really tricky, kind of weirdly designed. I don't think it's very smart at all. We got a bunch of uh, sleeths up here. Sadly, they aggroed onto us straight away, made it kind of difficult to get up. But look, we got this cool platform here overlooking the whirlpool. Look at this thing, so cool. Now, next episode, I haven't confirmed it yet. I will be off screen though. Next episode, we may be able to fight the water guardian. Which is going to have a lot of significance here. Next episode, we may finish the water disc. Because the third fragment, um, it's not here. But we will start the next episode acquiring it, if we can do it. And in this way, we'll get to see a boss fight a little bit earlier on than otherwise we might have. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Azuric, Rise of Parathia. Uh, let's hope this goes well. And I will see you next time. Woo! You can actually drop in the water and it will just swing you around. It's, like, unbelievable. Press the A button to continue your quest. So, yeah.